there. Now, it's, it's plastic and it's uh, rather thin. If you hit it with a, a shovel or hoe or something, it's easy to cut. It's also very inexpensive to replace that piece. Uh, there's also, um, see this little thing here in the ground? Okay, so if we had a, if we had a leak here, we cut it on either side, put this in the middle, and you've, you've repaired it there. But the tape itself is, is so inexpensive that, um, well, when I was in Brazil, we had these long runs of this stuff. And at the end of the season, the farm manager there, he just took that stuff and threw it away. Just took, took new stuff there. So, um, okay, whoops, I got transplant seedings here, okay. Transplanting, okay, mix your transplant water, five ounces of organic nutrient drench, OND, uh, that's an international ag lab product with five gallons of water. Well, that's one ounce to a gallon, right? So one ounce to a gallon, and then you need about um, a half a quart of this, depending on what you're transplanting, and you, you pour that in the bottom, of, make your transplant hole, pour that in the bottom of the hole, and in this case, we used uh, jubilate, um, uh, and you just sprinkle that in. That means we're putting life into that soil. We're, we are seeding that soil with microbes that are going to help that grow. When I first came across this, I was so pleased because you just about eliminate transplant shock. Uh, tomorrow we'll de demonstrate uh, there's a new transplant formula. Uh, and I have not used it, except that, we, that John just put some on this tree we put out here. It's a good product, and you'll be real pleased, uh, benefited if you use that type of thing. Okay. Um, okay, dust the roots. Okay, we've got that. Okay, there's the OND. Uh, we're planting in a greenhouse here. Here we're mixing that stuff. There, there's a little seven-year-old girl. She's planting some... Um, a, a bunch of different um, cabbage type plants, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, there. Okay, planting seeds. Uh, make a row with a trowel or your hand, whatever, a hoe. Uh, pour the water in the row, okay? Put the water in the bottom of that row first, then put your, put, put your jubilate in there or your transplant formula. Uh, and then put the seeds on top and cover it according to the, uh, to the instructions. You'll be better off if you put the water in the bottom of the hole. Most people plant in relatively dry soil and then they water the dickens out of the top. You'll be so much better if you put the water in the bottom. One thing, and now we're doing the same thing with transplanting, we're putting the water in the bottom of the hole and then transplanting on top. Uh, one caution, uh, if you are doing this, resist the temptation to work that soil. Uh, remember we just talked about the way we compact soil is that we put water with it and then we work that soil with a big heavy equipment to compact it. Well, if you um, put that water in the soil and then, you're, then you work it with your fingers even, uh, you're going to make mud bricks out of it. So push relatively dry soil up around it and push it down a little bit. If you want to water more, that's fine. Uh, but don't, don't compact that soil. Don't firm it too much there. Okay, here you can see we just planted a bunch of plants. We put uh, jubilate in the bottom of those holes and we put the OND. And then now we're planting seeds over here. Here, this is clear water, okay? We're not putting any... OND in there because that would be an organic nutrient drench and would have nitrogen. When we're planting seeds, we don't want to add extra nitrogen at that time. The transplants, that's good, they need it. But the seeds need to sprout without that extra nitrogen. Um, but again, put the water in the bottom of the trench there, make sure there's enough of it so that it's going to uh, start those and then we'll plant the seeds on top. Okay, here, this is back in the greenhouse. Now, we go to a lot of work to get air into the soil. So, um, uh, you do not want to stand on your, on your beds. The one time that it's okay is right when we're planting and we want good soil to seed um, contact. 
So, uh, you know, we're not jumping on this. Um, we just had somebody uh, compact that soil out there uh, in the tree there, but, but don't overdo it. We do want air to those roots there. Okay, planting tiny seeds. Tiny seeds, carrots, lettuce, mustard, may be planted easier by mixing the seed with sand in a cup or a can. So um, take the seed, amount that you want to plant, and mix it with a handful of, of sand. Uh, and then with a, after you make your row, uh, just kind of make a throwing motion like that. And it'll take a little bit of getting used to, but you'll, pretty soon you'll get used to it. Now, why are we doing that? Because we want to spread that seed out. Uh, if, I, if I take, let's take a, a one uh, square foot of soil. And if I plant a hundred carrot seeds in that one square foot, how many useful carrots am I going to get out of that? None. I heard somebody say none, and you're right on. None, because they're too crowded and they'll wind around each other and so forth. If I plant, let's say, 10 carrot seeds in that same area, I'm going to get 10 beautiful carrots out of that area. So we need to, 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 um, uh, to thin it out uh, there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Are you at all concerned about the source of your water, fluoride, chlorine, that sort of thing? Uh, am, I all, am I concerned about the fluoride and chlorine in my water? I absolutely am. Um, uh, I have, where, where I am now, we have irrigation water which comes from an irrigation ditch. So there's no fluorine or uh, chlorine in that. Uh, when you're in town, you can't avoid those things. So one thing you can do, if you're, if you're uh, for the chlorine, is get, um, get a couple of big plastic trash cans. If you can, set them up um, away so that you can get gravity feed from them. Fill those trash cans up, leave the lid off. The chlorine will off-gas into the air overnight. You've got to leave, leave the lid off, though. It'll go away, and you can use it the next day. Now, a few parts per million of chlorine in your water will kill just about anything in the soil. We're going to great lengths to get life into the soil. So uh, please be aware of that and, and get rid of the chlorine there. You can also get chlor uh, chlorine filters um, uh, that, may, that may help. Do you have any other suggestions on that, John? Um, no, I think you got it covered. Okay. You just watch out for salts too. That's always an issue with water in certain parts of the country. Yes, yes. So can you use your EC meter to read your straight water? Yes. Yeah. Yep. The lower the better. Is there a, do you have a parameter for that, a limit? Well, you got to do what you have to do. So, um, but uh, uh, less than 500 and 200 is better than that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, in, in, in the west or in drier areas, we really have to watch the, the salt there. Uh, some places the wells are even salty. Um, other places, well, um, where were we in Fallbrook, um, Southern California, it's um, L.A. area. There, the wells were salty. Um, all of their water was, was salty, and they had to uh, dilute it with fresh water that they get from Northern California just to make it usable at all in, in their homes. Um, Fallbrook, okay, Fallbrook, uh, I'll get to you in just a second, thank you, thank you. Um, used to be uh, the capital for the USA of growing avocados. Their avocado trees are dying all through there and it's because of the salt um, there. Okay, we, we had a question. Uh, with regard to chlorine in water, vitamin C does neutralize it in very small amounts very quickly. If you are worried about GMO corn, however, a lot of it's made from that. You need to find a non-GMO vitamin C source. I use a calcium ascorbate. Works very quickly, right on your skin from a swimming pool, or it can work very quickly in your tap water if you need to go water your garden in the city. 
Okay, I, I didn't know that. That's a good thing to know, that uh, chlorine would be neutralized if you use vitamin C, but make sure it doesn't come from corn, which would be GMO there. Yes? Since you're already talking about barrels up on stands, the other thing people are doing is collecting rainwater off the roof with a similar setup, and might not be a lot if you don't have big barrels, but something else you can get for water without chlorine and fluoride and all that. Yes, uh, good point, because here where we get quite a bit of water, um, we may be able to irrigate just off the water that comes off of your roof there. It's, it's surprising how much water you can collect off the roof there. Good point there. Okay. Okay, here's that same little girl planting. Now, we came back the next morning, uh, and half of her broccoli and cabbage plants and what have you had been eaten. They were gone. Uh, so we, we uh, uh, look at these, we took styrofoam cups, cut the bottoms out of them, and, um, and put them around. Some we put upside down, some we put this way. But when they were small, like in the previous picture, they were easier to slip over. And that was enough, that was enough to keep the, um, the, the critters off of it, pardon me? Uh, I think there were field mice in this case, but in this particular greenhouse we had field mice and we had gophers. And, and I want to point out that these boxes here, um, these are 2 by 12s I think, and on the bottom is a very, underneath that, is a very uh, heavy gopher wire. Uh, didn't matter, these little critters got in night after night. And, of course, the sides here are plastic, and this is wood here. And those critters ate through the wood. They ate through the plastic. Um, it was just a, a real hassle to keep them out of there. And tomorrow we'll talk about greenhouses and some of the things that we did to eliminate that. Um, they had a wonderful crop here of broccoli and cauliflower and other things there once we figured out how to keep keep the mice away. When the plants got bigger, the mice didn't bother them and there. Um, and for some reason, um, about here, I put an extra board in here. For some reason, I was able to keep the critters out of this end of the garden for, for quite a bit of, of time there. Um, <clears throat> this, was, this particular greenhouse was interesting in that um, we were planting in that. We had a seminar at that particular place. It's high in the mountains in California, about 4,500 foot elevation or so. And uh, so they had very cold nights. And um, when we were there, we, we reversed the whole system because, we, because the weather forecast said that the first day we were going to have nice weather. And for the rest of the week, uh, week-long seminar we had uh, rain and snow uh, predicted. So we went out and did all the outside work the first day and had a good time. Then we came in um, and um, did the PowerPoints and what have you afterwards. Um, on the last day, we did go out in the snow while it was snowing and plant a tree like we did out here. Uh, matter of fact, we planted a couple of trees there. and. Um, this little greenhouse is about 90 feet long in there. Uh, this little greenhouse was um, real close. And uh, this was one of those days when, a, when clouds would come over and it would snow, and then there'd be a patch of sunshine, and then another cloud would come over and it would snow some more there. So uh, while we were planting in the snow, I had everybody go through the greenhouse once. Now, the front and the back of that greenhouse open up. They're, uh, it's long, but the, the ends open up totally. And so we had the front and the back wide open, and I'd have people go in there. And everybody said, wow, it's hot in there. And yet it's snowing outside. There's a lot of energy in nature. We want to talk more about that tomorrow, though. There. Okay, if you will look into your... Oops, where did I put that? Yeah, look in your, your um, handout. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. Look for um, the formula. One quart of vinegar, half a quart of ammonia, 
Okay, one quart of vinegar, a half a quart of ammonia, and then the Coke or Pepsi, doesn't matter. White vinegar? Uh, just get cheap white vinegar in the grocery store. Yeah, whatever is inexpensive. So one quart of a vine vinegar, a half a quart of ammonia. I apologize for my mistake here. Okay, uh, and if you have it, optional, a, a quart of ocean water or um, put about um, uh, an ounce of, um, of the um, ocean water salt in it. Uh, that's, that's optional though. You don't, you don't have to have that. Okay, mix that up and just use it as a drench for plants and leaves and so forth. And you're going to change that plant. This is, this is an old uh, Carrie Reams recipe. And um, I think you turned me on to this, John. <laughs> um, anyway, here, here you can see, here's the Coke, there's the ammonia, there's the vinegar there. Okay, here we're demonstrating this. Here's a little fig tree, um, probably in about uh, three gallons of soil there. Now, this is, this is way too small for that fig tree normally to begin uh, producing figs there. So this is in our garden class. That's where we have it right out there. And um, so one night I, I demonstrated this. I do this every year, but I uh, demonstrated this. There, so I took uh, the, this uh, five gallons, put in the ammonia, the vinegar, the coke, um, and I don't think we even had the ocean water salts in this particular case there. We mix it up, we put water in, of course, and mix it up. And then, um, and I, I drenched that plant. That means I poured it all over that, on the leaves and the stem, and got plenty into the ground around it there. Now, uh, five gallons is way, way, way more than that plant needs. Um, uh, that'll do a whole bunch of plants there. But then somebody, uh, when I finished that, somebody said, oh, I didn't quite see that, Len, would you please redo that? And so I did it again there. Then the class was over, and uh, this Russian lady came in real late with her kids, and she said, oh, what are you doing? You know, can you show me? So that poor little plant got drenched three times that night, okay? Uh, I want to tell you that that little thing there, that little um, fig tree had 30 figs on it there. 30 figs on it. Now, that's way too much. We, I shouldn't have done that much. Uh, but, but, but anyway. When you, in the growth cycle do you want to change? When you suggest changing from vegetative to... Um, okay. Okay, Jim's question is when do we change from vegetative growth to reproductive growth? <clears throat> when the plant is big enough to try it. If we've got a tomato plant that's five inches tall. I don't want it to start putting on tomatoes. I want it to get big enough so that it can hold those tomatoes and do fine there. So let it mature. Today, uh, today um, with hormones and what have you, uh, we could have a little girl, I'm talking about a human being, a little girl could physically have a baby Let's say she was uh, eight years old. She could physically have a baby. Now, that would be a sin against that girl and against humanity there. But we can do that. Think of that when you're, when you're doing your plants. Let that plant mature. If that little girl would get to be 18 years old or older, her body is strong enough, her mind is, enough, uh, is, is good enough and uh, developed enough that uh, she could be a good mother and do just fine. But babies having babies just doesn't work there. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Lynn? Yes. Can you explain the chemistry of what is happening with this mixture and why it works to change it to apply it to fruiting? We're changing the nitrogen. Okay, uh, how, why does this work? Uh, we're changing the nitrogens. We're changing from a, um, a nitrate um, type of growing to a, an ammonia type of nitrogen. So we're changing the nitrogen. Is that right, John? Right. And okay. all those things are reproductive. So vinegar is a very strong reproductive, as is the phosphoric acid. And so it's just the, the, the elements that are strongly reproductive. Carbon is, and it just has the effect of overwhelming the growth energy that was there, and it switches it uh, more toward the reproductive. Right. Thank you. And we can, you can switch a plant back and forth. And you can see this. This little plant right here, 
uh, this little plant right here in a week had tiny, tiny little figs a week later uh, there. And two weeks later, brought it back to class, and then people could see those little figs, figs growing. Now, I, uh, um, because I grow these fig trees, I give them away. That little fig tree um, is damaged uh, because we forced it to reproduce too soon. So let your plants get big enough there. Yes, we've got a question here. Would the 